The issue affecting thousands of people in Jacksonville is up for a vote, expanding access to affordable housing. This is one of the items on Jacksonville Mayor Donna Deegan's plan for city spending with an estimate of more than 3,000 people in Jacksonville currently without a home and even more who need help right now paying their rent. And our Zach Wilcox is joining us live tonight outside City Hall where the council is expected to vote on the mayor's transition initiatives plan tonight. And Zach, that plan puts a lot of money toward affordable housing. It sure does, Anthony, and hopefully you can hear me. Busy night here at City Hall. You got uh, City Council going on. There's some carolers out here as well, as well as a rally going on. So hopefully I can uh, speak over all of that. But as you mentioned, the transition plan really has a lot of things that probably will sound pretty familiar from the day that the mayor was sworn in, the speech she gave that day. She talked about the somewhat shockingly high infant mortality rate in Jacksonville. That's one thing that's on there with several hundred thousand dollars going to curb that. Also, youth literacy is another topic that's addressed in this initiative's plan, but the biggest thing by far and large is housing. And this really feels like the culmination of some things we've been seeing and talking about for the past several months here. Back in July, we saw the mayor uh, tour a subsidized apartment complex, talking with some of the constituents there about what their living conditions are like. And we also saw the city council set up a committee specifically to address uh, homelessness and try and curb that issue. So they'll vote today on putting more than $6 million to emergency rentals, down payment assistance, and helping people find places that they can afford, not to mention several several hundreds of thousand dollars going toward homelessness initiatives and emergency shelters. An associate director with Family Promise of Jacksonville says she's been getting nonstop phone calls from families that are, are in a bind right now. When you have a mom that's calling you and she's sleeping in the car with four children, especially lately when it's been rainy and cold, or in July when the heat index at 11 o'clock at night will be 85, 90 degrees, that's really hard to have to say to a mom, we don't have a solution for you at the present time. The majority of the funding for the transition initiatives are going to be coming through uh, the general fund as well as the American Rescue Plan money that the city got uh, toward the tail end of the COVID-19 pandemic. In downtown, Zach Wilcox, First Coast News, on your side.